So let's take a look at a Skylake motherboard. This is the Z170A Gaming M5 from MSI. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Tech Yes City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with a Skylake motherboard review. This is the MSI Z170A Gaming M5. Now, first of all, with this review, we'll take a look at what you get in the box, take a look at the features on the motherboard, then we'll look at the BIOS quickly, and then we'll take a look at the onboard audio and the killer NIC, and then I will tell you guys my subjective thoughts and opinions on this motherboard. With that being said, though, let's get on with it. So included in the box, you get six SATA cables. You also get an SLI connector, a easy quick start manual. You also get a driver CD and some little notes there to put on your cables as well, which is an interesting touch. And you also get the famous door note hanger there, which you can hang on your door to let people know that you're gaming. Now, as soon as you pull this motherboard out of the box, you'll notice that it has a red and black theme to it. And also the paint included on the motherboard is a matte black finish. Now going over the VRM, so upon pulling off the heat sinks, I noticed that it had a 10 plus two phase power design. So that's 10 phases dedicated to the CPU and then two phases dedicated to the DDR4 memory there. Now an important thing with Skylake is that they've put off the voltage regulator off the CPU back onto the motherboard. So a VRM is a little bit more important on Skylake than it is on Haswell. Now the good thing about MSI is what they've done here is they've included a really good VRM solution. You've got Nikos MOSFETs there on the low side, you've got 20 amps on the MOSFETs, and on the high side you've got them rated at 13 amps. You've also got titanium chokes there uh, all the way across the VRM there, and then you've got MSI's dark solid caps which all in all, this will give you guys a very solid and stable overclock. When I tested the heatsink out after gaming on it at 4.6 gigahertz at 1.35 volt, I noticed that the temperatures were like 37 degrees for the VRM. And this is in a 23 degree uh, cooled environment. So the VRM is certainly capable of handling any CPU or any four core overclocks that you throw at it. Now moving to the right of the board, you've got four DDR4 black themed memory slots there. And one thing that I noticed is that they've got DDR4 boost printed there. And upon inspection, I've noticed that they've isolated the circuitry for the DDR4 memory, which is a cool thing if you're going for a really high overclock. Though when I tried overclocking my memory, my memory wasn't that good. So uh, the DDR4 boost couldn't help a lot there. So moving down the right side of the board there, you've got a USB 3 front out you've also got six SATA 3 ports and two SATA Express ports there. So if you use two of those SATA Express ports, they will cancel out four of the SATA 3 ports there. So that's something to keep in mind. Below that, you've also got a LED indicator, which will, oddly enough, tell you your CPU temperature. And I found this to be a really useful touch and I really like what they've done with this because especially if you're gaming, you wanna know if your CPU is getting really hot. Now, just besides that, you've got a heatsink there with the Dragon logo covering the chipset hub there, which they've still kept on the Z178 architecture. Now, moving down to the bottom of the board here, from right to left, you've got a power jumper there, as well as a clear CMOS jumper, and then you've got two uh, USB 2 front outs there, as well as a TPM connector, a serial connector, and a chassis intrusion connector. You've also got the slow mode switch there. It's just something they're interesting that they've brought into the gaming M5 motherboard there. Now moving to the left of that, we have the Audio Boost 3 with its own dedicated section. This is the Realtek 1150, which has its own electromagnetic shield. You've also got trace lighting there, which lights up red in the dark. Now moving to the right of that, you have a M.2 slot there, and you actually get two of these, one further down the board as well. And then you have four PCI 1 speed slots, and you also get three PCI 16 speed slots. However, the first port is the only port that will work in 16 speed mode. The one below that will work in 8 speed if you wish to put your graphics cards in SLI or Crossfire. And then the one below that is dedicated for three-way Crossfire, which will work in 4 speed only. Uh, they are all PCI 3 compatible. Now looking at the fan connections, you get a total of five with two of them being four pin and three of them being three pin. And then at the top of the board, you lastly get the 12 volt connection there, which is really easy to access and it is in a good location. 
So for input output from the top to the bottom of the motherboard, we get one PS2 there. We also get two USB 2 ports, a DVI-D port, and then six USB 3.1 slots there. One of those being Type-C and then five of those being Type-A. You also get a HDMI output meshed in there as well as a killer NIC E2400 LAN input there. Now for audio out, you've got a optical out there. You've also got manual configuration for analog 5.1 out as well as a headphone out and a mic in and line in port. Also with the motherboard, it's a very solid motherboard with the PCB being pretty thick and I was surprised at how rigid the motherboard was and how good everything felt on the motherboard. So a quick look at the BIOS, one thing that I've noted with the BIOS is that they've changed it since the Z87 iteration when I used the G45 Gaming. They've made it more simpler, they've made it easier to use but they've also kept the options there for uh, more advanced overclockers. So I noticed that I had all my favorite options there. And even though with Skylake, I believe they've dumbed down the overclocking a little bit, which isn't MSI's fault, they've still given you all the options you would need for an enthusiast overclocker. Now with that being said, let's take a quick look at the onboard audio solution and the killer NIC software suite. Now let's take a look at the onboard audio solution included with the MSI Z178 Gaming. This is the Audio Boost 3. Now, when I started putting on my pair of headphones, this is the Fidelio ones, and started listening to music, I was blown away by how good this output was. The bass and the sub bass were there, which is indicative of a decent or a good uh, DAC amp solution. And I think on this output stage, they've included dual OP amps. They've also included a Realtek 1150 DAC. And as well as that, I will state that the separation was pretty good as well. Uh, if you've got easy to drive headphones like mine, which are low impedance, uh, these are the Fidelio ones, high sensitivity, then the volume will be more than enough and it will sound phenomenal. Though one thing I will stress is that if you have hard to drive headphones, for instance, Hi-Fi Man HE 400s, then obviously you will want to go out and get a separate amp to power those hard to drive high impedance headphones. So keep that in mind. Another thing as well is the crosstalk was extremely low, which means that you're going to get a true stereo sound coming into these headphones. Uh, also, the included software suite was actually really easy to use. You've got preset EQs there. You've also got things like uh, room correction, and you've got profiles that you can save there. The one thing I couldn't find was a custom EQ, which I would have liked to have seen, though that's easily remedied by a free program called Equalizer APO, and I've actually got a tutorial for that. I'll put the link in the description below for that. Uh, now let's move on now to the mic input. So now that we've talked about output, let's talk about input. And now for this segment and the previous segment, I've been using the V Motor Boom Pro plug directly into my onboard audio. And now when I started critically listening to the audio going into the mic input, I noticed that when I started speaking, there was a little bit of noise. But if I went uh, and if I didn't say anything, there'd be no noise at all. Did you hear any noise? I bet you didn't. So what that means is that noise suppression is turned on by default. Now, when I checked the options, I couldn't find any checkboxes to turn on or off noise suppression, which is a little bit of a bummer because if you're using this for even relatively professional recordings, like you're doing streaming or something like that, then you do want noise suppression off because it ultimately uh, changes your voice and it, I believe it makes it a little bit lower quality. The one good thing about the mic input is that it is really loud. And when I was doing a Skype, a Skype conversation with my brother, I noticed that he could hear me very clearly and there was no hissing or anything like that. So it was a good thing. I mean, the mic input is solid. I would just like to see the option to turn on or off noise suppression. So let's quickly take a look at the Killer E2400, which comes included on the gaming M5 motherboard. Now, when I first installed the drivers and the software suite for the Killer E2400, I was impressed by how much more simpler they've made the user interface. So it's a lot more easier to use nowadays. And the good thing about Killer's claims is that they're actually legit. And I've tested this in the past. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to see the testing. But basically, if you're a, a university student, for example, at a dorm where you're on a congested network, uh, you will get a better online gaming experience uh, if you're using the Killer NIC with the software as opposed to another NIC, which is a great thing the killer are offering there with their software suite. However, another good thing that MSI has done with the implementation of the killer is that they've allowed the option to just install the drivers only, which is a fantastic thing for people like me 
who aren't on a congested network and don't need the accompanying software suite. So kudos to MSI, and also I haven't uh, come into any problems with the NIC. So in conclusion, the Z170A gaming motherboard from MSI is one solid solution. I was really impressed with the three top things that I look for in a motherboard. That is the VRM solution. First off, I look at that. It was a really good implementation that they've done here. You've got a 12 phase power design with all solid components and a decent heat sink there, which takes care of cooling. And it ran cool in practice. And this was with a pretty heavy overclock. So for the VRM, they've checked the box there. Next thing I look at is the onboard audio solution. Now, the audio output was phenomenal. So if you're a guy who wants to get into gaming and enjoy your games, this motherboard has a really good onboard audio solution to boot. Now, one thing I will critique though is the mic input there. I do believe that could use a little bit of work there as I know ASRock, for instance, on their motherboards are including pretty solid mic in ports there. Uh, so that's one thing I'd like to see improved on this motherboard. However, the killer NIC, the third thing that I look for on a motherboard, the killer NIC is definitely solid when I was playing some games on this motherboard, I noticed that the killer NIC did not miss a beat. And also the software suite has improved a lot since the last time I used it. So in all in all, this motherboard is a solid solution for someone who's looking to get into overclocking uh, with this simple and easy to use UEFI BIOS. Also, some things that I forgot to touch on, you get included an X split license with this motherboard. And they've also put metal uh, shrouding on the PCI Express ports, they call this the impregnable armor. So this will essentially make it so that you don't break your PCI Express ports. I mean, if you're into being a barbarian and installing graphics cards, then this motherboard might be really good for you, even though I don't know anyone who does that. Though on that note, I will say that I could not find a clear CMOS button, which was something that I was worried about first. However, upon overclocking on this motherboard, and then uh, coming into failed overclocks, like for instance, I just tested it with a complete failure of an overclock. I noticed that the BIOS just reset itself really quickly when it came into a failed overclock and it got you back up and running in no time. So essentially giving way to not needing a clear CMOS button in the first place. So very good implementation of the UEFI BIOS by MSI there. Now for the ultimate question of, is the Z170A gaming M5 motherboard from MSI worth your money? And in my opinion, yes. And I will be giving this product a four out of five stars today because it has a fantastic VRM solution. That's the military class five, which besides the marketing is a very cool VRM solution. You've also got a great implementation there of the BIOS, which both beginners and advanced users will find familiar and easy to use. And you also having things like included X split license and just overall a great output on the audio there which is the Realtek 1150 so if you're using headphones you will have an amazing experience or easy to drive headphones you'll have an amazing experience listening to audio however I will be knocking off one star for that mic input because I believe a product that's aimed at gamers especially one with an included X split license should have a more solid uh, mic input or a more, more solid amp included on the mic input. So I will be knocking a star off for that. So that's about it from me guys. If you like this review, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, then drop a comment in the comments section below. Also, this motherboard was provided for me by MSI Australia, and it does cost around about 300 AUD. However, if you're in the States and you're in the UK and you can pick it up for cheaper, then by all means do so. It is one great motherboard to use in practice. Though that being said, you guys probably want to know how it performs. How Skylake performed, Brian? How Skylake performed? Well, I've done some preliminary tests, and in gaming, I did the Armor 3 benchmark, which is my CPU bound test. It performed about 5% better than the uh, 40, yeah, the Haswell 4 core 4670K at 4.6 gigahertz. Uh, also, in productivity, it did very well, and it is a snappy CPU. However, it's not leaps and bounds ahead of Haswell, just keep that in mind. However, I'll be leaving the benchmarks for the CPU review for you guys, and I'll catch you in the next tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.